episode 73. The street lights were fuzzy from the fine rain that was falling. As I made my way home, I felt very old. But when I looked at the tip of my nose, I could see fine misty beads. And looking cross-eyed made me dizzy, so I quit. As I made my way home, I, I thought, what a thing to tell Jem tomorrow. He'd be so mad he missed it, he wouldn't speak to me for days. As I made my way home, I thought Jem and I would get grown, but there wasn't much left for us to learn, except possibly algebra. I ran up the steps and into the house. Aunt Alexandra had gone to bed, and Atticus's room was dark. I would see if Jem might be reviving. Atticus was in Jem's room, sitting by his bed. He was reading a book. Is Jem awake yet? Sleeping peacefully. He won't be awake until morning. Oh, are you sitting up with him? Just for an hour or so. Go to bed, Scout. You've had a long day. Well, I think I'll stay with you for a while. Suit yourself, said Atticus. It must have been after midnight. And I was puzzled by his amiable acquiescence. He was shrewder than I, however. The moment I sat down, I began to feel sleepy. What you reading? I asked. Atticus turned the book over. Something of gems called The Gray Ghost. I was suddenly awake. Why'd you get that one? Honey, I don't know. Just picked it up. One of the few things I haven't read, he said pointedly. Read it out loud, please, Atticus. It's real scary. No, he said. You've had enough scaring for a while. This is too. Atticus, I wasn't scared. He raised his eyebrows, and I protested. Leastways, not till I started telling Mr. Tate about it. Jem wasn't scared. Asked him, and he said he wasn't. Besides, nothing's real scary except in books. Atticus opened his mouth to say something, but shut it again. He took his thumb from the middle of the book and turned back to the first page. I moved over and leaned my head against his knee. Hmm, he said. The Gray Ghost by Secretary Hawkins, Chapter One. I willed myself to stay awake, but the rain was so soft and the room was so warm and his voice was so deep and his knee was so snug that I slept. Seconds later, it seemed his shoe was gently nudging my ribs. He lifted me to my feet and walked me to my room. Heard every word you said, I muttered. Wasn't asleep at all. It's about a ship and three-fingered Fred and Stoner's boy. He unhooked my overalls, leaned me against him, and pulled them off. He held me up with one hand and reached for my pajamas with the other. Yeah, and they all thought it was the stoner boy messing up their clubhouse and throwing ink all over it. And he guided me to the bed and sat me down, lifted my legs and put me under the cover. And they chased him and he could never catch him because they didn't know what he looked like. And Atticus, when they finally saw him, why... He hadn't done any of those things, Atticus. He was real nice. His hands were under my chin, pulling up the cover, tucking it around me. Most people are, Scout, when you finally see them. He turned out the light and went into Jim's room. He would be there all night, and he would be there when Jim waked up in the morning.